Ever feel like someone hit fast forward on the tech world and left us all struggling to catch up? Yeah, it's a whirlwind out there. Today, we're hitting pause, rewinding all the way back to 1964 when BASIC was born. Ah, BASIC. For some people, that brings back memories. Those clunky computers, green text on a black screen. You know, I was surprised to learn this supposed vintage language still has some relevant lessons for us even today. Oh, absolutely, believe it or not. Our source material this time around actually starts by diving into BASIC's origin story back at Dartmouth College. Get this, it was literally designed for beginners. Well, the name gives it away, right? That's true. They called it Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. You think they were trying to make it approachable or something? I think it's fair to say they succeeded. And you know, it's really fascinating. BASIC's creators weren't just focused on teaching people a language, they were teaching a way of thinking. It really is programming 101, isn't it? The yep. gateway to all those more complex languages. Right. You need to crawl before you can walk. Imagine trying to just jump into artificial intelligence without understanding the basics, the algorithms. The document compares it to learning to drive a stick shift. And it's true. Even if you end up driving an automatic, those fundamentals, they stick with you. So even today, whether it's a smartphone or one of those self-driving cars, those fundamental programming principles are underpinning everything. It's like we're all so busy marveling at the latest gadgets that we forget to appreciate the building blocks that make it all possible. So you're saying this ancient language basic is still relevant? Absolutely. And just to be clear, simpler doesn't necessarily mean less powerful. It's about understanding how the software interacts with the hardware. Those core concepts have driven technological advancements for decades. You know, it's funny you should mention building blocks. Oh. Because our source material actually mentions there have been thousands of programming languages. Thousands, really? Almost 9,000 to be exact. Wow. And get this, at least 245 are still considered significant today. I guess that's not too surprising when you think about it. It is mind-boggling, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. I mean, how do you even wrap your head around that many languages? It's like, how do you even choose which one to learn? Well, that's where understanding the fundamental principles of programming is so important. Right. It is um, kind of like learning the grammar of a language, any language. I see, okay. Once you've got those rules down, you can start to appreciate the nuances of all the different dialects and styles. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and this is where it gets really interesting. How so? Well, the document actually dives into one specific flavor of BASIC. Oh, there's more than one? Oh yeah, there are tons of them. But this one is called Power Basic. Power Basics. Yeah, it's got some pretty impressive features. The author highlights its speed, for one thing, and the programs tend to have really small file sizes. Well, that's always a plus. Definitely. And it doesn't need a runtime library, whatever that is. Now you're just using big words to sound clever. Maybe a little. But seriously, <laughs> I'll admit, that one went over my head, too. So what is a runtime library in layman's terms? Okay, so imagine if every time you wanted to share even a simple document, you had to include this massive instruction manual with it. Okay. That's kind of what a runtime library is like. So PowerBasic doesn't need that. Exactly. It's mm. designed to be a lot leaner. It produces these really compact, efficient programs mm. that don't need that bulky instruction manual to function. So it's like the difference between carrying around a whole toolbox versus just taking the one tool you need. There you go. See? You've got it. That's pretty slick. It is. But it does make you wonder, with all these amazing tools and all this incredible technology at our fingertips. Yeah. Why even bother learning to program at all? You know what? That's a great question, and it's one the document tackles head on. Oh. While it's true, we do have apps for almost everything these days. You're not wrong. Knowing how to program, it's about more than just building the next big thing. It's not just about creating the next viral app. Right. It's about having the power to create, period. It's about not just consuming. Does that make sense? I think I'm starting to see what you mean. So you're saying it's like having a secret superpower, the ability to shape the digital world around you. You've got it. Yeah. And those possibilities are everywhere you look. The document highlights some really cool examples. Like, what if you could automate all those tedious tasks we all have to deal with? I could get behind that. Right. Or building custom tools designed for your specific needs. Instead of trying to find an app for that. Exactly. You could even create complex simulations and models. It's amazing when you think about it. My thermostat and refrigerator can basically have a conversation these days. It's kind of creepy. It really is like we're living in a science fiction novel sometimes. For real. But I guess that's why understanding even a little bit of programming is so powerful. Absolutely. It's the difference between just wondering how something works 
and knowing how to make it work differently. You got it. Okay, so we've established programming is definitely still relevant today. But what about basic specifically? Is it just a stepping stone or can it still hold its own in the modern world? Well, if our source is right, it sounds like the rumors of BASIC's death have been greatly exaggerated. But they might be onto something there. It's still a fantastic tool for teaching those fundamental programming concepts we keep coming back to. That makes sense. And it's simplicity. That yeah. can actually be a real strength, oh. especially for certain tasks. Like they say, sometimes the simplest solution is the best. Exactly. You don't always need to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes it's better to just make a really good wheel. I like that. You know, there's also something really satisfying about building something yourself. Even if it's just a simple program. Oh, tell me about it. The feeling of accomplishment is huge. It's like the difference between enjoying a delicious meal and understanding all the culinary skills, the ingredients that went into making it. That is such a great analogy. Right. One satisfies your immediate need, but the other. The other unlocks a whole world of possibilities. Couldn't have said it better myself. It really makes you question that assumption that older technology just automatically becomes obsolete. It's so true. We see it all the time. Look at vinyl records. They're making a huge comeback. It's like sometimes those classics, they still have something unique to offer. And often, looking back at those older technologies can give us a fresh perspective on the challenges we face today. That's a really good point. They remind us that sometimes the most elegant solution, it's the one that focuses on the fundamentals. Keep it simple. Exactly. So after taking this deep dive into the world of basic, yeah, it definitely seems like this vintage language, it's not quite ready to retire to the computer science museum just yet. Not by a long shot. And even more importantly, I think we've uncovered the value of understanding those building blocks of technology. The foundation. Exactly. It doesn't really matter what language you choose to express them in. It's all about cultivating those skills that translate across the board. Yeah. Problem solving, computational thinking. Right. That ability to just break down complex tasks into manageable steps. Those are skills that apply in just about any field, don't they? Absolutely. No. In any field, in life in general, yeah. they're just good to have. Well said. So we've shared our thoughts on basics relevance, but now we want to hear from you. Our source mentioned those thousands of programming languages out there. What's the most unique or unexpected way you've seen programming used? Share your discoveries with us. We might even feature them in a future deep dive. We'd love to hear your ideas. Until then, happy coding.